about now, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feel them blessing, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, this is a story by one of my subscribers who was actually locked up with Diablo from Bannings, Sapo's gang. You already know who he is. Crime family connected to Mr. Criminal. It's a crazy story about, you know, rides kicking off, always going in and out of jail. You know, just a message to the youth. Like, man, sometimes there's more to life than just becoming a repeated violent offender and going back to jail because, you know, you get stuck in that cycle. Now he's looking at what he's looking at for what he did. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. Uh, man, I got a gang of stories, dog. Now this is Diablo from Banning, Sapo's gang. We all know about him being connected to a crime family. He has a video called Riverside County Roll Call. Got 1.3 million views, probably even more now because he got a little bit more famous than what he did recently. Obviously, it was a tragic situation. He had a sister dating a Vato who was getting out of hand, using his hands. Homeboy confronted him, dumbed him, looking at a 1-8, you know what I mean? He's on a hot one, facing a lot of time. Sudanian rapper slash connected to Mr. Criminal, who's very popular, very famous, who I want to say stole my Torta song. Oh, well, that's between me and him. But I'm going to let him get the heat because he got a lot of heat for dropping it. So I'm kind of thankful I didn't drop mine. You know what I mean? But still, this individual, he's facing some hard time right now. No one knows, you know, how it's going to turn out for him. So this happened in 2005 in Centinella. He was on a yard, but I heard, he, I heard the homies were telling me that he was a YA baby. So whatever he did, they don't know what exactly what he did on a yard, but he got a chicada, went to the hole. Ended up getting a, my subscribers was neighbor with them in the ad seg, ASU. From there, they both got kicked out to B-Yard. But from B-Yard, they put Diablo in the gym. And they kind of made him like the blockero. Usually the blockero is something for the buildings. So my subscribers on the yard, but Diablo's in the gym. That it must have not been that serious for his chicada because even though he got a chicada, went to the back, usually that kind of kills somebody's political career. But dude was just known as a big tweaker but he was still a good camarada, that he actually went to the B, uh, to the gym on the B yard and they actually gave him the llaves right there and they pretty much told him his responsibilities. Keep everybody in line, keep everybody in check, oversee everything, you need to uh, collect a third for the, for, the, for the mesa, so on and so forth. Anytime somebody gets removed, we're gonna let you know, you take care of it with your soldados. They gave him his responsibilities and he fulfilled his responsibilities. The homie did say he sold it up. He had the gym sewed up right there in Centinella on B-Yard. But something happens. A ridiculous situation. Diablo and four other camaradas were drinking. So there was a total of five Sureños drinking Pruno. Got a little drunk. They were hella cool with the white boys. They said they were, it was uh, five camaradas and five whites. Just drinking amongst themselves in a corner bunk by Diablo's bunk. Just a, a fat batch of Pruno. Somehow, some way, Diablo is joking with this white and he's getting disrespectful, so whatever the white said back to Diablo, obviously the beer balls kicked into effect. Obviously he felt challenged, obviously he felt embarrassed in front of his camaradas, so he felt like he needed to do something. So BAM, he hits that white dude. BAM, it kicks off. So now you got a five on five in a dorm living in the, in the gym in the back of the bunks. Who's are just locking them. Da, 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 da. All the Sureños and the whites jump in towards the back. Big old melee kicks off. So there's Sureños on the yard and the pull-up bar is kind of close to the gym window. It's real easy to communicate to the gym, to the window by the pull-up bars. That's how, the, that's how my subscribers said the Sureños were talking. They would always post somebody right there doing the pull-up bars, relay messages back and forth. Let me know when any kites are coming out. Hey, fool, this fool needs a checkada. This fool got to go. And then they push off. Simple communication. Well, there's always Sureños going to be at that pull-up bar in front of the gym. So they hear the alarm go off. And they hear it on the radio code, such and such, pretty much meaning it's a melee. So bam, one of the Sureños runs towards the window and there's a Sureño in the building that's kicking off in the gym. He runs towards the window and he goes, hey, it's with the Gavas. It's with the Gavas and jumps back into the riot. 
But the Sureño at the window runs out to the yard, doesn't lay it down, and he's yelling to the Sureños on the yard where my subscriber was at and was like, hey, bro, it's the Gavas. It's the Gavas. Pretty much my Sureño was like, no questions asked, bro. We'll ask later. We'll figure all this stuff out later, bro. All we know is our camaradas in the gym are, are, are in there with very few numbers, but against the whites, we're going to kick it off. So they just jumped up off the ground and started rushing the whites. He said there was this one white dude. He, he was running Peckerwood at the time. He said, man, he was this tall surfer dude, something like you would see on, uh, you know, Point Blank or something. That he was just tall. All he ever did on the yard is he go on the yard, kick it with this, uh, the wood pile, and then he play a uh, acoustic guitar. You know that? -de 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 -de. I, don't, I don't know what acoustic guitar is. I don't even know what it looks like. I was like a regular guitar. He's like, nah, it's a different one, bro. It's a smaller one. Whatever, whatever. So he pretty much he was ACDC on the yard. That's how I. That's how I can picture it. So bam, he's over here like, and then bam, it kicks off. They get rushed. Dude winds up getting up. He said, man, this white boy was tall, big, had long surfer hair. He goes, bro, this fool was knocking out the homies left and right. A lot of the homies were overwhelming the whites in other areas. He goes, but where we were at, we were trying to get them. He said, camarada after camarada after camarada were getting dropped. He goes, you got to remember, this dude was like six something. My homies are like five, 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 four. We couldn't get to him. We tried our best. We couldn't get to him. My subscriber said he was waiting to jump in. He was like letting the Sureños distract this surfer dude, this Peckerwood. And when he finally got a chance, he said he just booked it. Swung with all his might with a haymaker. Hit him. Didn't do nothing, but it dropped him to his knees. So my subscriber says, hey, but I want to point this fact out to you. Even though I dropped him to his knees, he was still tall. So it's like he's on his knees just locking. Back up, 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 back up. Back up, back up. He's all, bro, we could not get this food down. He was still handling his business. He said the tower cops started shooting. He was like, bro, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kick this fool in his face and I'm going to run. So he ran and he tried to throw his kick all his might. And he just hears the bullet, the, the block gun go, phew. And he was like, whoa, like some Max Payne type stuff. And he still kicked him with his leg in motion as the bullet was flying. So he's like, he's staring at the bullet. It's going, whoa. And he's looking at his leg, and his leg's coming like a roundhouse. Woo! And he kicks the white, the peckerwood in the mouth. Boom! But he breaks his toe. So now his toe is all discombobulated. It got dislocated. If you, if that's even really a thing, or probably bent backwards. I don't know. He broke his toe. That's all. That's all the report said. Is he broke his toe? Certain people went to the hole. Certain people went back to the buildings. But all the sureños that were involved in this, including Diablo, goes to the back. So now the mess I was inquiring, like, hey, bro, what the hell happened? What, what, what was this all this about? The senores are asking the meseros, like, hey, bro, why did they kick off on the yard? Bro, that's bad for business, especially with the whites when we, we kind of are close with the whites. A lot of investigations are being conducted. The white boy that got hit by Diablo was left behind in the gym. So he reports it like, yeah, man, this is what happened. We got drunk. We were joking around. We were playing too much. I said something. He took it personal. He hit me. That was it. So now they got the full story and they let, they let the ASU, the Macedos in the back know what Diablo's situation was and how he was involved in it. The white boy that got left behind, the rest of the Gawas removed him. And I was like, why'd they remove him if he got, if he got sucker punched by Diablo because Diablo got too drunk and they were just playing? He goes, well, regardless of the fact, even if he said something disrespectful, remotely disrespectful or just jokingly disrespectful, when Diablo hit him, that fool ran and he called underneath the bunks while the whole ride kicked off. He goes, so they the, the white boy smashed him for cowardice acts. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Diablo at first denied it, said the white boy hit him. But the Sureños are like, hey, fool, just tell the truth. The ones that were back there with them on the bunk drinking. So they wind up telling them, he want, Diablo winds up telling them the truth. Like, look, we were drinking, we were messing around, but he got disrespectful. So I hit him, bro. I had it, you know, I did. Which is not really against the rules, but it kind of is since it escalated to that kind of situation. So Diablo was in the back and he got a checkada and my subscriber said he never heard from Diablo again. But he knew Diablo used to be back there rapping all the time, that he stood solid the whole time. He just made some minor mistakes, caused a little riot with the whites, but it was no big deal. Just fools got too drunk. Well, because of this riot, there was a Sureño that was getting called upon because they didn't think he jumped in. His name was Tito from Norwalk. Now, every, they didn't, the, the, nobody seen him get involved but my subscriber. My subscriber was getting jumped by three Gavas after he, he kicked that surfer dude. 
three gavas were beating up the homie. And that fool was like, they said he's like a short little bean. Like he looked like a little flejole, short, chunky. And he ran over there and he heard his homie say, hey man, get off my homie, bro. Get off my homie. Started getting on the white guys. He did what he could. But my subscribers seen that Tito did get involved. But the rest of the Sureños involved in this melee were like, bro, Tito didn't get involved. So they go around asking a lot of Sureños, but they forget somehow, some way to ask my subscriber, hey, bro, did you see if Tito got involved? They didn't even ask him. I think they had a prejudgmental notion like, bro, he didn't get in, bro. We're just going to, you know, send him on a holiday, bro. He, he, he got something coming. Tito tries to plead his case. They're not hearing it. They didn't even ask my subscriber until later. He relinquished it like, bro, Tito helped me out, bro. I was getting jumped by three white guys. Like, what the hell? Like, that's, that's scandalous, bro. But they gave him a cleanup. Some dude named Ant from Verdugo. He got to go. My subscriber says he can't remember why Ant from Verdugo had to go. But he needed to get blasted. But Ant was a big boy. So they sent three camaradas on him. But they were young kids, bro. That ain't never did a removal in their life, bro. Never been a removal in their life. But were heavily involved in the politics. Obviously got the uh, approval by the senores to work for them. It was time for them to do some dirt. And they sent little Tito on a mission with them. So it kicks off. Bam. They said they couldn't get Ant down. Ant winds up dropping Tito from Norwalk. And he's handling his business with the other dudes. Tito gets up. But those other Sureños lay it down. So now it's just Ant Tito going at it. And like I said, Tito looked like a little flejole. A little bean. A little short thing. He said he was handling his business, bro. He gave it all. His, everything he had, bro. He did what he had to do in this pegada. Getting molly at the end of the day, but the Sudan was like, Hey, fool, they were yelling at the other camarada, like, You better get up, bro, and jump in, bro. Like, what the hell? That's your, that's your, you know what I mean? If you come back, so they jumped up, did what they had to do, smashed them. What made the situation worse is that when Tito got dropped by Ant from Verdugo, he hit his head on the pull bar because that's where they smashed him at. It was about a pull bar, like close to the tower, and it busted his head open, so it looked like he was the victim in this whole situation. He said everything got squashed with the Gavas. Things went back to normal. Obviously, it was a misunderstanding. Diablo got his chicada. All my subscribers said was like, bro, throughout my whole term, I watched Diablo come and go multiple times. Like, he was a strong out tweaker. He did a couple years, get released, couple years, get released. It was always in the back and forth. But overall, cool dude. He just kicked it off with the Gavas on some dumb stuff. It rocked. They wanted up rocking it. He had fun doing a riot. But still, though, the basis of the story is, man, when you get involved in one situation, and it gets out of hand, it can lead to multiple situations and multiple people can get hurt and involved in the process. I always knew alcohol can get the best of people. I always knew that sometimes people think they can handle alcoholism and think that they can conduct themselves properly. Everybody says that a lot, bro, but oftentimes there's been a scenario or a situation when it comes to alcohol and drinking that's gonna make you make irrational decisions. It's gonna make you do things that you wouldn't have done sober, even if it's against the rules, following rules, or it was just being a different person. I noticed that about alcohol in prison and on the streets too. Alcohol changes people. Dude, I haven't drank since I've been out, and I've been out since 2020, I haven't drank a beer. I'm a firm believer in staying away from any controlled substances or mind-altering substances because I don't, I don't want to become somebody that I'm not. And I noticed that in jail with a lot of people. I've always watched cellies fight each other over drinking, being disrespectful because when you drink you want to play around with people you cross the line because you're having fun you don't even realize that you cross the line and people get getting hurt people lose their lives i've seen sellies choke their sellies out paralyze their sellies over drinking too much and the sellies like hey fool make me a sandwich you b-word or hey fool shut up man forget your hood your hood halloween start set tripping and you could lose your life like that even on the streets i watch a lot of videos and i see a lot of social media where individuals are getting drunk Get into an altercation at a bar. There was a homie named Champ. He was from, uh, he was a Norteño from Gilroy. He was drunk at the bar, had a few words. Dude was like, called him out at the bar, like, what's up, fool? Let's go outside. And he goes outside, went outside, hit the dude once, but because he was intoxicated and couldn't keep his balance, he tripped over the curb, fell, his head hit the ground, bled, like internal bleeding, passed away. The homie wound up getting 20 years for that. One hit, too much alcohol. So my best advice to the youth out there, I understand you guys want to have fun. Just be careful. Because once your mind becomes controlled by a different substance, you may think you have your control of thinking. You may think you know what you're doing, how to conduct yourself. But that's always going to lead to a problem if you don't.
And there's always going to be somebody there that's either sober or who can handle his alcohol. And you're going to get hurt in the process. Just like in this situation, a white boy gets beat up because he wanted to have fun, drinking with a sueño, joking with a sueño, went too far, got socked, got scared, didn't want to get involved, and then his, the, the white boys wind up removing him anyways. So be careful when you indulge in alcohol out there. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When we got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.